If you've been paying attention to the channel lately, you might have noticed that my little channel profile picture in the corner has changed and is now wearing a mitre. But why is this? Well, I'll give you a little clue. Center class, we can to meet. Center class, center class, and the two looks what a beat. After giving your ears a moment to recover and the Dutch speakers in the audience to stop headbanging, today's video is going to be about Sinterklaas, which has been described and is probably the easiest way to describe it to people who aren't aware of the tradition as being a type of Dutch Christmas, quote unquote, although it's obviously not on the 25th of December, but it's on the 5th of December when people celebrate it. Now, a little note about this. I am from, uh, my family is from the Northern Netherlands, so we do things on the evening of the 5th of December, which is called Sinterklaasavond, which comes down to Saint Nicholas Eve. Uh, however, for people in the more Catholic areas of the Netherlands, so below the Rhine and the rivers in the Netherlands and in Belgium and Luxembourg and in parts of France, which is actually where they also celebrate Sinterklaas with various names, they actually open their presents on the 6th rather than on the eve of the 5th. So that's a small distinction that I should make there. But essentially today's video is going to be all about Sinterklaas and this tradition that many of the Dutch speaking areas have, although obviously there are many areas throughout Northwestern Europe that celebrate this in some form. And in many forms throughout pretty much all of Europe, Santa Claus is also essentially based on St. Nicholas as are various other figures uh, such as Krampus and other ones throughout Germanic Europe. Now, who is Sinterklaas? Well, if you remember, Sinterklaas Arfond is Saint Nicholas Eve. So Sint is the Dutch word for Saint and Klaas is um, Saint Nicholas. It's a shortened version of Nicholas. So Sinterklaas is Saint Nicholas and Saint Nicholas is famous in the Netherlands and Belgium and parts of Luxembourg and France because he is essentially the one who comes and gives presents to the children as well as his assistants called Zwarte Piet. Now they do this in various ways, but essentially they arrive from Spain with a sack of presents and they go around the whole country giving children their presents, just like Santa Claus and the elves do in other countries. Now, Santa Claus was actually a historical figure, but let's find out a little bit more about it. So as I said, he was a historical figure and he was actually a Greek bishop in Turkey at the time and he lived during the end of the second uh, the sorry the third century the start of the fourth century AD at this time and his most famous story that's connected to Saint Nicholas the real Saint Nicholas was that he was passing by a house one day and there was a man a poor man with three daughters and this man was so poor that he wasn't able to pay the dowry price now the dowry price back in the day was the price that the father or the family of of the wife who would be engaged had to pay essentially as the bride price but because he was so poor he wouldn't be able to afford this for all three of his daughters so the legend says that then obviously if they wouldn't be able to be married off they would have to go into prostitution and of course this isn't a very christian thing and saint nicholas being the good saint the goede saint that he is he essentially throws in every night for three nights throws in a little purse of money which essentially after the third night, he's thrown in enough money in each go to pay off the bride prices. And this will be important later on for the modern day traditions of Sinterklaas. Before going to bed, children put carrots in their shoes to feed the horse of Sinterklaas called Amerigo in the Netherlands or some other something wrong in Belgium. And in the morning when they return, they might just find a parcel inside, kindly donated by the beaten. So throughout the Middle Ages, this was a popular tradition because in light of Sinterklaas helping these poor people out, this was a time when people would give to the poor just as St. Nicholas had done. And as well as this, it was also a sort of carnival. So people would go out drinking, get absolutely mortal, hammered. Um, and essentially that's where most of the saints days, what happened on most of them in Europe at the time. And this was celebrated throughout large parts of Europe, including the Netherlands, of course. 
During the Eighty Years' War, when the Netherlands gained its independence from Spain, the country was divided along religious lines, and the Dutch Republic had very strong Calvinist sentiments, which meant that they didn't particularly like the honouring of this orthodox figure, who was very Catholic in nature, as was the very concept of the festival. However, large parts of the Southern Netherlands, which were also part of the Dutch Republic, as well as the capital Amsterdam, were still very Catholic, and so the tradition clung on despite the Calvinists trying to reduce it, and in fact to introduce a more Christ Kindle kind of tradition where it was Christ giving the presents rather than Sinterklaas, although eventually Sinterklaas would return. Now, the return is most clear in 1850 when the schoolteacher Jan Schenkman published a book Sint Nicolaas en zijn Knecht, which was essentially a book in which we see the first sort of very modern incarnations of Sinterklaas and his servant, which is Knecht in Dutch, Zwarte Piet. Now, if you're interested in Zwarte Piet, I have actually got a whole video coming out about him, because as you can imagine, he is a black character who is helping Sinterklaas, so of course there is a controversy surrounding him, but I will be outlining this in another video which I will link once that is up. And it's Jans Genkman who really gives us the kind of modern image of Sinterklaas, with his helper, although there are references to him, to both of them, earlier that they are going across the rooftops, and also that he's coming from Spain on a steamship. And I remember in 1850, this was very exciting and new, the steamship idea. So always and traditionally every year, Sinterklaas and the Beaten on the first Saturday after the 11th of November arrive somewhere in a coastal city in the Netherlands on a steamboat from Spain. And actually in my video about the Zwarte Beaten, I will explain why Spain. There is a very interesting link there between Spain and the Beaten and Sinterklaas. And actually this year it was in Dokkum in Friesland where they arrived. Although this time the Christian holy man wasn't murdered, unlike Boniface who was killed there. The relationship with the steamboat also gave rise to perhaps the most famous of many and very iconic children's songs to do with Sinterklaas, the Sinterklaas Liedjes or Sinterklaas songs, which is Zie Gins Komt de Stoomboot. Zie Gins Komt de Stoomboot uit Spanje weer aan. Hij brengt ons Sint Nicolaas, ik zie hem al staan. Hoe hup Pult zijn paardje het dek op en neer, hoe waaien de wimpels al heen en alweer. A much more ancient connection that Sinterklaas has is with the Norse or the Germanic god Odin or Wodan. And there are a lot of things that they share in common, which might be why it's thought that Odin or Wodan was one of the inspirations for Sinterklaas. Now, of course, Wodan rides on a nine-legged horse called Sleipnir, and this horse is generally shown to be white. Now, what's special about Sleipnir, apart from having nine legs, is that they could ride through the sky. It could fly. And this was actually part of an, a much older pagan tradition, which was known as the Wild Hunt, which is where it was believed that on a winter night, Woden and a whole host of other warriors and gods um, would ride through the sky, essentially on a, a hunt through the sky. Now, of course, Sinterklaas, he is famous for also having a white horse, and apart from he doesn't go through the sky as such, but he does ride over the rooftops and over the chimneys. So this again can be seen as having some deeper pagan symbolism to it. Now, as well as this, of course, Odin is famous for having a spear. He is often called the spear god. In Old Norse, things like Geirtir, which is a uh, spear god, or Geirvaldr, uh, which is spear master, things like that. So we see that obviously then Sinterklaas is famous for his crozier. Now, this might not be an obvious link, but again, when you have a lot of these things, that they share in common, it's very interesting. Now there's also a theory about the ravens being akin to Zwarte Piet, but again I'm not going to go into that now because I will go into that in my video about the Zwarte Pieten, where I'll go into it in some detail. Now of course they are both old and wise, they both have long hair, a long beard, and they are seen as this wise old figure, in many ways like Santa Claus, who is actually inspired by by Sinterklaas. So in reality, I think Santa Claus is a bit of a ripoff really of Sinterklaas because Santa Claus was actually inspired by and come up with essentially in New York, which of course used to be New Amsterdam and will again be New Amsterdam. But no, I'm just kidding. Um, 
but it was actually thanks to the Dutch settlers in New Amsterdam and then it became New York and then they wanted to try and revive this tradition in uh, New York because obviously on the 5th of December people had celebrated uh, St. Nick's Eve and that kind of thing and then it slowly developed into instead of being a horse it's uh, you know pulled by reindeer and it's a sleigh and he's a bit fatter and more German and it's Santa Claus rather than Sinterklaas uh, and little things change but essentially the, the whole Santa Claus idea with his elves instead of his Waterpeten you know to that kind of thing it actually comes back to the same thing in the end. Another interesting connection going back to the Norse mythology and Odin is that traditionally Odin was seen as the one who gave the runes to mankind after hanging from the branches of the world tree Yggdrasil for nine days and nine nights. Now in a similar way the traditional, one of the most traditional gifts to give on Sinterklaas and that is it's associated with Sinterklaas and the Svartapitan are chocolate letters and then you get the chocolate letter that the first name of uh, the first letter that your name starts with for example is the chocolate letter that you would then be given so what generally happens on the 5th of december or the 6th for the people in the south of the netherlands and belgium is that there would be a knock on the door and that would then be zwarte piet delivering a bag or a sack full of presents and so the night would continue with people uh, exchanging these presents from this great big sack as well as possibly a few poems breien, most of which breien, are humorous breien breien nachten lang in dagen sokken mutsen truien bij de vleet wie kan dat allemaal nog dragen geen mens is er die dat nog weet wol wol gek word ik van wolletje Schapen staan te rillen van de kou. Zonder vachtje in de winter is geen lolletje. Die arme beestjes, kijk ze nou. Well, thank you very much for watching to this video about Sinterklaas. Just explaining the Dutch tradition of Sinterklaas and Sinterklaas Avond to you guys. Now, as I said, I will be making a video all about the Zwarte Pieten and some of the controversy surrounding it very soon. I will put links to that. So remember to subscribe if you want to find that. As well as this on my second channel, which is Vlogs in Clogs, which I will link in the description below. You can see my whole Sinterklaas evening where I'll be making a dedicated vlog with all of the poems that were read out and some of the gifts and other fun little items there so thanks very much for watching i'm history with hill but please do leave a like a thumbs up a comment if you're interested and don't forget to subscribe thanks very much see you soon